Yeah, so I um, wanted to cover Dwarf Fortress Remote. Um, this is a iPad app that I wanted to give some exposure. I mean, it's it's essentially it's Dwarf Fortress on your your iPad or your iPhone. I'm currently showing it on my iPad, but um, you know, I've I spent 10, 15 minutes yesterday diddling around on my uh, iPhone with with uh, Dwarf Fortress. Anyway, um, yeah. So essentially, what what this is is a sort of a front end for Dwarf Fortress running on some server. The server is set up either, you know, you can set one up on your own um, machine if you're kind of savvy, or um, there was a recent update, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing this right now, where the developer for this actually set up um, the ability for him to uh, launch this, you know, server subscription service that he's, you know, mentioning here. Um, I'm pretty technically savvy, so I never had a problem setting up the server, but I mean, just simply tapping on the subscription thing and then immediately launching it would be so much easier, I think, for a lot of people. And I think that's actually what, what this um, app has been really missing. So I'm, you know, extremely happy that, that this is, uh, this is moving forward. <clears throat> so the developer is Vitaly, uh, Pronkin, probably pronouncing his name wrong, but yeah, so this this game's been around for, or I guess this app's been around for uh, at least two years. Um, I remember playing with it a couple of years ago when I was doing a bit of Dwarf Fortress. Um, I, I never really got great at Dwarf Fortress. I think I've probably spent between 10 and 20 hours playing the game total, but um, yeah, just in general, it's, it's a super stable app um, in... And this might go against, you know, veteran players, but in my opinion, this is the way to play at least, you know, the, the vanilla Dwarf Fortress. Um, there's a lot of stuff that you can do kind of with uh, DF Hack that, um, you know, aren't, isn't really integrated with this app. But um, just in general, I think that, you know, people that are starting out to play Dwarf Fortress should really check this out. Um, the controls are extremely intuitive. You're not sitting there trying to memorize the, you know... 300 different <laughs> commands on the keyboard to, to get this playing. Um, here's a few preview shots of you know what it what it looks like, and I mean in general this is this is fantastic. It certainly beats the ASCII mode, and um, I think I think this texture pack's available um, for people playing on the desktop. But um, yeah, I mean it's it's a great way again to get into the game. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Uh, and just show the show off the app. Um, when you first start it, there's I mean there's there's not a lot here. I've I've already set up my my server here. Um, it's in my you know local network, but um, you can easily set this up to play outside of your network. Um, you just need to be again a little savvy and, and know how to do port forwarding through your router. But um, yeah, I mean like I mentioned, I played around for 15 minutes on my iPhone and I was completely away from home. And I mean the as long as you have a decent internet connection. Um, either strong cellular or you're on a Wi-Fi connection, the um, game just works very, very well. Um, the server subscription is what I was mentioning earlier. Uh, if you click on here, you can get, um, I think it's, <coughs> yeah, right here, a three-day trial for $5 a month, or sorry, three-day trial for free, and then $5 a month after that. Um, I, I originally hosted this on a, you know, a super cheap, web server that I, you know, was hosted out on the internet, um, and it, I was paying $5 a month for that, so having this just set this up is, is really, really nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, like I mentioned, I'm not going to dive into that, but your experience, I'm assuming, would be the same. Um, here's, uh, kind of the sort of initial... Uh, game I was playing, so I'll dive into here and just kind of show you um, sort of what what I you know what I've been up to. Um, I realized yesterday when I was initially showing it off, um, watching the beginning of this game is kind of boring, <laughs> at least as far as the setup goes. Um, but I mean, yeah, this is this is it, and I mean the the textures are pretty great. Like you can easily tell those are dogs. Um, if you, like, look here, there's, you know, the tree trunk, and you can chop that down if you're, you know, just beginning, which everyone sort of needs to do. 
<clears throat> um, I'm, you know, going down one Z level, and this is where I had started my game. Um, you know, this is very, very early. I'm just setting up the initial, you know, workstations, um, bedrooms, uh, the initial stockpile. So, I mean, yeah, this is still very, very early, but at least it's something to check out. Um, you know, I'm, I'm clearing out uh, some area to get some stone so I can start doing some stone crafting. Um, but, I mean, yeah, this is... This is the the game, and I wanted to sort of show off a little bit more um, that may either entice people that are you know veterans of the game but are looking for some way to play this where they don't have to be physically at their desktop um, or brand new players. So um, up here on the top left is this menu. Um, again, uh, there's actually a server running in the background where if you're watching the the dwarf fortress window running you can actually see um, all of these commands being done essentially the same way that you'd be doing it if you were on a keyboard. But this, again, this UI for me is just fantastic as far as um, being significantly more playable, I think, at least initially. Um, I'm not saying that anyone who's just starting out on Dwarf Fortress should, should jump in right here. There's a, there's a few really good... Um, introductory videos to Dwarf Fortress, like, hey, you need to, you know, first start by digging. How do you actually dig? How do you um, set up your initial stockpiles? How do you configure them once you've made them? Um, so I'm, I'm not going to dive into to that area. I'm going to leave, leave those, um, probably links to those tutorials on the bottom of this video when I, when I post it. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, way more approachable than, again, trying to memorize the, the dozens and dozens of keys. So, for instance, when you're um, first starting out, you're going to need to dig, and the designation menu is, is where you start doing that. So, if I tap on designation, here's all the different commands. Um, mining, in particular, is what I was just talking about. But, I mean, if you want to create a channel or, you know, remove the ramps all around your entrance or you know, destroy things, you can, I mean, all, everything here maps to the the letters that you'd be pushing on the keyboard, so if, you, if you're if you familiar with that, then you can, you know, look down the letters. Um, if you're not super familiar with, with the exact commands, then, I mean, it's clearly very easy to see what you'd be doing here. Um, some of the other things that I really like are, again, you can, the building is here, if you're going to build workshops, which is very common. It's it's red to let you know that there is a sub menu underneath that. So when you tap on that, you can see you know all the different workshops you can build here. Um, yeah, I mean it's it's pretty great. Um, stockpiles are stockpiles. Um, zones you set up zones um, you know to to give your animals a place to stay to set up water you know potable water areas. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, won't, won't dig too deep into any of those. Um, another thing that's really nice is, like, the announcements. It's a nice scrollable menu that you can just, like, tap your, you know, the, use the standard gestures you're, you're comfortable with um, using mo with mobile devices. Um, I don't actually have a manager set up yet, but um, this is where, you know, you could queue all your, your work. Um, uh, points and routes. There's, there's actually some things on here that I didn't really realize is a thing that makes, you know, is extremely easy. Like, so for instance, um, for, for digging, you can set different priorities for, um, for digging. So under mining, you know, you, you, f so for instance, if you wanted to mine, you, you tap one corner, um, you can either tap it again or press the green circle on the top right to, you know, select the, the corner that you want to start on. Um, then move, you know, tap the, the opposite corner, again, hit the green button, and that'll designate it for, for mining. Um, but one of the things that I didn't realize is you can actually prioritize digging projects over the other. So on the bottom right corner, there's this wrench. Um, when you tap on that, you can select the different mining modes, auto mine, ores, and gems, um, such like, you know, the, I think those commands are for at least intermediate players that they're aware of. Um, these priorities up here, you can, you know, the standard priority is four, but you can set priority level three digging, which um, that last project I just told them to do was digging priority three, or priority four, and actually the, the 
few little squares they have on the bottom left corner are also um, priority four. But you know, if I designate this new area, which um, I've designated as priority three, and then unpause the game, the miners will actually immediately leave the projects they were working on to go dig the higher priority projects. And for me, like that was really cool. I wasn't. I think that's something that you can do in Dwarf Fortress, but I I wasn't aware of my entire. 10, 15 hours of playing Dwarf Fortress until I um, started playing, you know, this this um, iPad version that, you know, you can do that. And it's also super, super easy. I mean, it's just, you know, we want to set it, all of a sudden you need to set the super high priority digging project higher than, you know, maybe your your other ones, or you could prioritize entire areas and um, always have your, your miners mining at some super low priority, or, yeah, super low priority project. But if you have, like, higher priorities you want to start carving you know new rooms upstairs and get your your you know your inn set up or your tavern set up or your um i don't know dining room set up it's yeah really really easy so yeah like i you know just showed they they left and now they're doing the, the lower priority projects because there was one you know queued up behind it um yeah so that's that's just something that that is i thought was really cool um there are some aspects that aren't super straightforward and I had to look these up the first time I was playing um, up on the top there's a bell with a C and again I don't remember if there's a um, I don't remember if there's a similar situation in there but um, basically what you're what that's letting you know is that there's some sort of um, event that occurred and I believe under announcements reports is where um, you would find that so that C was for combat but I mean there are I think there's three different letters um, I can't remember what they all are but yeah the, the the red C was letting you know that there was a combat notification that you may have missed um, and again if you're in the middle of streaming something and talking about it you're probably not paying too close attention all right so yeah I mean there's um, there's all of that. One of the other things that I you know, really, really liked is it's super easy to dig into all of your units. So on this menu, you have this, this unit list here. Um, again, I think these commands mostly correlate to what the, the Dwarf Fortress thing is. But again, tapping on things versus uh, using the left and right. Um, oh, I can't remember what those commands are to, to change the tabs. But yeah, for me, like tapping on things and then again swiping to uh, look at things like, hey, this guy doesn't is not doing anything right now. So we can go to the unit if we want to. Um, again, if we want to, we can either go through the directly through the menu, which I'm going to show you right now, but I'll also show you how to just select the, a, a someone or you know literally anything. It's the standard. Um, I forget. It's either zoom or look command that um, is in Dwarf Fortress. But here on the uh, unit menu, if you tap the I, it takes you to this menu where you know you can set their skills, manage their labor, see how they're doing, uh, see their thoughts and preferences, and you know it's the standard um, gobs and gobs of text with the good stuff in green and the bad stuff in red, and uh, yeah, I mean it, again the colors I think usually line up with the game. <coughs> um, customize, you can name your your dude. Is as or do that as normal. Um, manage labors is really nice because you can see everything, but then you know, say he's not doing anything and you think maybe he should start doing masonry work or cutting down trees. Um, you can go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, so again, on the, on the left menu with this eyeglass, you can either zoom to your um, actually, I'm not quite sure what the, the house button does. Um, but yeah, the, this if you tap like one of the commands that you use very frequently is tapping on the eyeglass and then tapping on the eyeball, and then you can basically just tap around and see you know what's there. Um, here's you know a floor with you know my my expedition leader. Uh, here you can tap like say you didn't know what was over here. It's like oh that's the the craft store craft dwarf's workshop. Um, the zones and stockpiles need to be configured. Um, Again, this is normal for uh, the game, but to do that here, again, I really like how you can um, 
modify them. So here I'm, you know, using the, the look menu. Um, you can tap the, the green circle and then tap on the stockpile. Um, I really like this UI and I really think that it's, it's a great way to, to see what's happening a lot better than, you know, standard Dwarf Fortress. Um, when you do set up a stockpile, you're going to go to settings. Um, and in order to enable or disable um, items from the stockpile, so in general, if you want to enable all refuse, you can or disable it. Um, again, just swipe to do that. Um, Dwarf Fortress, one of the nice things about it is you can be extremely fine-grained with, with what your um, stockpiles are allowed to hold. Um, again, this is the very beginning of the game for me, so I just said get everything in here that's not food, dead things, or trash. And um, But, you know, eventually you are going to want to um, make finer-tuned stockpiles, and you can do that by, you know, just tapping on, you know, the... The arrow next to on the right side of the command and then again you can just say hey you know you can use all the metal ores and again you can dig in even further and just say you know which specific ores you want in that pile or you can disable specific ores from being in a pile by doing the same thing um all right i think that that shows a lot of what i i really liked about this um you know, status is, is nice, you can see, and this is the, the general status window, if you tap more, you can see, you know, all the animals, um, you can see what, what your stocks are, I don't think, I believe there's a, if it's a manager or like an accountant or something, but one of the, one of the jobs uh, is required to actually have that, that be there, but, um, you know, there's a captain on the guard, I don't have one yet. Don't have anything. So yeah, here's my my current civilization. I don't know about any others, but I'm apparently the muscular rocks. Um, or maybe that's where we originally came from. But yeah, so there's there's more of that. Um, yeah, I mean, setting up squads is super easy. You can define, you know, which squads you have and all the standard um, inventory things that you would need to manage there. Um, one thing that I really like that I, I, it was in the base game, but it wasn't really emphasized, and I don't know, I never really used this until I started using the iPad, was the, the points and routes. So you can place a point on the um, map, and then, you know, I'll just call this home. Um, just makes it really easy to go to and from a specific point. Um, so say you need to, I don't know, you're way down in you know, way underground and you want to go back home really quick, you just go to points and routes and you just tap home and boom, you're there. And you can set, again, waypoints everywhere. You can set up your fishing areas and your training areas and, you know, different mines and um, things that you're you're doing. But yeah, you can easily set up a whole list of these points. Um, labors, again, you can find who's doing what. Um, apparently I have no weaponsmiths, armorers, dissectors, metal crafters. Um, you know, it's it's nice that you can kind of see those, and again, this is another way to, um, by going to the labors menu, is seeing who's doing what, and you can, again, tap on your specific people. This is just my initial party. I haven't received any migrants yet. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is this is the app. I, I am extremely pleased with this, and um, I mean, in general, this, to me, seems like the way to play Dwarf Fortress. I'm... You know, not not an experienced veteran. I've I've never tried going outside of Vanilla um, Dwarf Fortress too much. Um, I do like the the DF hack, the extra tools like um, I don't know. Auto labor is, is I think it's included in here um, in the pack that uh, you go to when you want to download um, the entire application. But yeah, I mean, this is in my opinion the the best way to get started with Dwarf Fortress. Um, having that new um, save and close, yeah, having that new subscription system to me, I think, was the the last thing this this really needed to get uh, to get things moving. So anyway, I think that's that's about it for now. I'm I'm gonna um, probably end the video here, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions if people get stuck with the app or everything or anything to do with um, the app itself. I'm not super great at Dwarf Fortress, but I'm, you know, I'm capable of getting a, a, a fortress started at least. 
Um, can answer questions with that too. But anyway, again, this was uh, Dwarf Fortress Remote, and I will post a link for this as well in the description. Cool, thank you.